S is for safety, which I tossed away a long time ago. I quickly took out another file that was in the bin and started reading. There's no time to waste. Might as well get this one out of the way too, I thought to myself. I don't remember getting up from bed. I don't remember putting on a jacket on top of fresh new clothes that morning. And I definitely don't remember purchasing a train ticket and going on a train. And yet, there I was, sitting in one of the seats of the passenger car of the train, feeling like I'd stayed up all night and hadn't rested once. Think about it, I most likely had done just that, because I often stayed up while working on another one of my stories. I was a book writer, and I worked on writing mysteries that tested the mind as much as possible. I was also a loner, at least, that's what most people refer to me as. A young but shaggy looking man in his 20s whose favorite color was black or gray, depending on how he felt. The colors of my clothing made me look like I was blending into the shadows, which I liked just fine, but I could tell my looks were disturbing the horde of people sitting next to me. Yes, I was not alone on this train, which surprised me at the time, don't know why though. But I found it really strange how everyone around me looked about my age, sharing the same look that I'm sure I had in my face. Confusion. On my left, there was a timid looking lady who wore a purple blouse with long leggings. On my right was a powerful looking man with big square glasses that couldn't stop fidgeting his hands with a big cube looking thing. The man didn't look up once and seemed to be trying to force himself to concentrate on fidgeting with the item, whatever it was. He wore a lame looking vest with a checkered patterned shirt underneath. He had these wrinkled up cargo pants on that slightly annoyed me for some reason. There were a few other people that caught my eye, but I didn't pay attention to them long enough to really notice anything about them. Why? Why did I come on this train? I asked myself. I hate being around a lot of people, and I hate being anywhere but home. I couldn't give an answer though because I couldn't remember anything that happened yesterday, or even the day before. My days were simple. I woke up, ate breakfast, got to work for most of the day, ate dinner, slept, and repeated the process all over again. So for me to not remember doing any of that the last two days made me feel kind of out of my element, if that made sense. Then, all of a sudden, I remembered one thing and only one thing. The dream I had yesterday. It was such a strange, vivid dream that I could never forget. I was standing outside my house, looking up at the sky. The sky, once bright and blue, was now a dark black that revealed no sun or moon. And yet it somehow radiated a light that lit up the world around me, just enough for me to see the shape of things around me. I watched the sky for a while, and then, as if I was in a trance, I turned to my right and watched as the ground around me crumbled and quaked. I stumbled and shook with the ground, and yet I couldn't seem to force myself to move an inch. It was like I was paralyzed or something. Suddenly, people showed up out of nowhere, running, screaming, and wailing. Some of them were swallowed into the earth, others ran into the building around me, and few were brave enough or foolish enough to stay outside and watch the events play out just like I was. I remember feeling the temperature outside rise like it's never risen before and seeing some kind of bright liquid ooze out of the ground and burn everything it touched. All I knew was that it wasn't lava. It moved as though it had some kind of consciousness. While it did burn inanimate objects, it seemed to have a desire for burning anything sentient. And it should have been no surprise to me that it slowly was oozing its way towards me who was still in a strong trance I couldn't get out of. Just as it was less than a foot away from me, I heard a distant air horn sound. It sounded again, this time closer to where I was, and I found my legs kicking up buckets of dust as I rushed to wherever the sound was coming from. The buildings around me were as I moved as quickly as I could to where I thought would be safety, yet I had no idea what I would find. When I finally stopped, I found myself in the middle of a field of what I assumed was grass. The mysterious liquid surrounded me as it had burned up almost everything. I backed away from it, 
watching as it was making its way towards me. Then, out of the darkness, a train chugged its way towards me, going through the liquid unaffected and stopping as soon as it was right next to me. I was shocked, scared, but not enough to act dumb and stay to be consumed by the liquid. As soon as the train doors opened, I got inside without a second thought and sat down as it started up and moved through the liquid and into some tunnel that appeared to be out of nowhere just like it did. It didn't take me long to realize that the train was floating and that it hadn't been going through the liquid like I thought it was. In fact, it was trying its best to avoid it. While I sat and watched landscapes pass that were burned to ashes, a deep layer of fatigue rolled over me and I knocked out almost instantly. And that was my dream. A train. Huh, I thought to myself. Funny how I woke up and I'm on a train right now. I waited for 10 more minutes, then looked behind me, moving the blinds out of the way and trying to look out the window. What I could see no, what I couldn't see opened my eyes in a way I never would have expected. I couldn't see anything, not a single thing. It was the darkest black you could imagine. I couldn't tell if there's anything living outside or if we were even on earth. That's it, I can't take this. I got up so fast that everyone around me looked up in fear, but I couldn't care less what they thought about me. Listen, now, I know this might sound strange coming out of a guy you don't know, but I need you guys to check out the window right now. I waited for at least someone to do what I said, but no one moved. Is anyone listening to me right now? I just said, we know what you mean, the man with the glasses who sat next to me said. But all of us already looked inside the window already. You were the last one. Okay. I was trying not to let panic control me. So, does anyone know what's going on? Because I have no idea what I'm even doing on this train. No one said anything. They all just looked up at me with fear in their hearts. Great, I'm the last person who would want to speak to a group of people, yet I'm the only one talking, I quickly thought of myself. Well, someone's got to have an idea. Did any of you guys go on this train because you wanted to, or no? I couldn't tell you if I wanted to, man. A really tall guy who had a very unique braided hairstyle and wore a red beanie on his head got up from his seat and spoke confidently, but with a lot of voice cracks. But I'm willing to give information if it'll help. After all, we're all kind of scared here, and I'm sure you're no different. My name's Marco, by the way. Call me Mark. Dante. I shook his hand. Well, Dante, thing is, I was supposed to be meeting up with my friends when a tree fell into the middle of the road while I was driving. It knocked me out, and the next thing I knew, I woke up on this train with all these other people. Well, I guess that's one thing we have in common. We both woke up on this train with no idea how we got here. Yeah, but that's not the weirdest part. Thing is, I had the most terrifying dream. Mark stopped as though he was quickly reliving it. I walked up to him faster than he could blink. Mark, can you tell me what your dream was about? This is very important. Mark blinked hard and quickly. Well, I can't exactly remember all of it, but I think I was standing outside and, and what, what else do you remember? Mark's eyes got wide for a moment as though he was having the dream all over again. The world, man. There was destruction everywhere. The sky was black and lava spewed out everywhere. I saw people running, so I went with them, but the lava was too fast and, and out of nowhere, a train came and rescued you, right? I finished his statement without pause and we both stood there in silence for a moment. The lady who sat next to me stood up and gave a tentative smile. Hi. My name's Lena. Uh, I also had the same dream and woke up on this train. The guy who sat next to me didn't get up or look up, but said, Call me Tom. Yeah, me too. Slowly, everyone around me shook their heads, murmuring and exchanging anxious glances. I couldn't believe it. We all had the same dream, 
and woke up here. How could that be possible? I mean, it can't be, can it? Lena asked. Well, it must be, because it happened to everyone here, Tom answered. But why? That's what I'm going to find out. A sizable, muscular guy wearing a skin-tight t-shirt with the word champ on it got up and marched over to the door. Just wait a second, I called out. I don't take orders from anyone, and I'm going to be late to my boxing match. The man tried to open the door, but there was no handle, button, switch, or anything that could be used to open it. Hey, what gives? Whatever. If we all work together, we can bust this door down. The man looked at everyone else sitting down with a look of determination, but the people wouldn't move. Come on, people. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has something important to do. Maybe you got friends to return to, family to come back to, or something else, but you can't get back without helping me out. Wait, I spoke. I don't think this is a normal train. If you do manage to bust down the door, you don't know what might be out there. Doesn't matter, the man shouted. We've got the numbers. If some kind of kidnapper is behind this, we can take him down and get out of this stupid thing. Have you even looked outside? We don't even know if that dream was real or not. And if it is, what do you think could happen to us get out of it? You believe in dreams too much, the man chuckled. You look pretty young for a guy. Listen, kid, if you'd live as long as I have, you'd have realized that most of the time dreams don't mean anything. They're not real. I noticed that with the man's words, People were getting their will, their determination back, and they didn't seem like they wanted to stay any longer. I didn't, but I wasn't willing to act so quickly just yet. After a few minutes, everyone except me, Lena, Marco, and Tom were helping push against the door. They kept pushing into it harder and harder, and I thought I could hear the door starting to give in. But they stopped real quick after what happened next. Please do not try to exit the passenger cars. I'm afraid the results would not be to your liking if you managed to succeed. A woman's voice spoke through the speakers on the train. People spoke over each other in a mix of relief and disbelief. The train had a conductor or someone else on it. Someone who wasn't stuck in the passenger car like we were. Hey, get us out of here, the people shouted. I'm afraid I can't do that, the woman replied. And her saying that silenced a lot of them. Well, why not, I dared to ask. Because your government needs you to do an important mission. And it requires you to follow my orders so that you can live to see another tomorrow. Now get ready to fall asleep and hold on. End of part one. That's another story done. Thanks for taking the time to listen to it. And hopefully you had a good experience. See you on the flip side.